Welcome to another video. This is a Delta Epsilon proof, Epsilon Delta, whichever order you want to take it. And um, I'm just going to run through this. I have some other videos that cover this topic, but I've never done anything for a cubic function. I've done quadratics and linears, but this one is cubic. And I got this, uh, was, I received an email from someone a while ago, and I just said, let's do this video today. So, now remember that it is important to know what the definition of a limit is. And because if you don't know it, you can't do the proof. So, I'm going to write the definition of the limit, and then we'll use it to prove that this limit is minus 1. It's obvious, so nobody's asking you to calculate the limit. We're trying to do the proof, and it's always a sequence of steps you need to take. If you can master it, you can answer any of these questions. So let's get into it. So let's go over the statement of proof first. And all we have to say is, given that the limit as x approaches a of f of x, is equal to L, just as we have it here. So in this case, A is 1, F of X is X cubed minus 2X, and L is minus 1. If you're ever given this, what we're saying is, for all epsilon greater than 0, that is a positive number, which is epsilon, there exists a delta. See, that's the key. For all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta. Okay? And what about it? Such that if the distance between x and this given point, the distance from here to here, is less than epsilon, I mean is less than delta, then we can boldly say that the distance of the value of the function from that limit is less than epsilon. This is all you need to prove every time you do a delta epsilon proof. And you need to practice being able to state this, that if you are given this, then for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero. I forgot that. Delta has to be a positive delta. So if we translate this statement to this, see what it's going to look like. Let me put a line here. We are saying that if our a in this case will be 1 if x minus 1 is less than delta then this which is our f of x which is x cubed minus 2x minus this minus 1 is less than epsilon so remember all we're looking for is a delta we're claiming that if our epsilon is a positive number, then there exists a delta, which is also positive. Let's begin. Your first or your beginning channel for this is to start from this part. Because this is the part that we're saying for all epsilon greater than zero. So we're claiming that if epsilon is greater than zero, there exists a delta. We're going to go look for a delta starting from this claim that we have made. So let's begin. Let's simplify what's inside here. We can actually say that the absolute value of x cubed minus 2x plus 1 is less than epsilon. Every time you do a delta epsilon proof, whatever expression you end up with in the absolute value bars must be factorable. Even if you don't see it, you must tell yourself, I can factor out x minus 1. There has to be some x minus 1 here. So let's say your factoring skill is weak, you need to go clean it up. Because looking at this, I don't know what to do, but what I can do is I can break up the middle and write it this way. Absolute value of x cubed minus x minus x. You see, minus 2x is broken down into this, and then I have this. It's less than epsilon. We're going to say that the absolute value, what's common to this and this, we have... Um, x is common. If I take out 
x from here, I'm going to have x squared. If I take out x from here, I'm going to get minus 1. And there's nothing common in these two except for negative 1. So if I take out negative 1, I'm going to have x minus 1. It's less than epsilon. Okay, now these two are not common. I have to find a way. I can break this down. This is difference of two squares. So we can go, um, let's do this, make it wider. So this is going to be x times, if you break this open, it's going to be x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay, then you have minus x minus 1, less than epsilon. Hmm. Now I see this common to both of them, so I can take x minus 1 out. So I'm going to have absolute value of x minus 1, and what is left will be x times x plus 1, minus 1. Nice. Less than epsilon. So I can say that, oh, I can make this up. So this is the same thing as x minus 1 times x squared plus x minus 1. That's how to factor this, is less than epsilon. And remember that the absolute value of AB is equal to the absolute value of A times the absolute value of B. Okay, generally this is something you must know about absolute values. The absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. Not true for addition and subtraction, but for multiplication it is true. Okay, so I can break this into absolute value. In fact, maybe, okay, let's do it, of x minus 1 times the absolute value of x squared plus x minus 1, less than epsilon. This is where it gets very interesting. Because, at this point, I really need x minus 1, because that's the focus. x minus 1 is less than delta, and I'm looking for that delta. So, but this guy is not a number, because if it was a number, I would just use it to divide this, which, you really, really, really just have to find a delta. It's just that you want to avoid a situation where this becomes zero. Okay, because if this is zero, uh, then it creates a problem. Okay, can this ever be zero? Yes, this can be zero. Now, whenever we talk about delta, we're thinking of a very small number. So whatever number we're thinking of for delta has to be some. That is the distance from x for you to, when you're calculating limits, you want to be close enough to the point so you can know what you're talking about. Okay, so the farthest you want to go away from the point is 1. Really, 1 is actually a big number. But just to be reasonable and to make things easy, we're going to say, we're going to assume that this distance, x minus 1, x minus 1 is less than 1. Generally, that's what is typically taken when you do proofs like this. So, we say, um, let x, absolute value of x minus 1, be less than 1. And what this means is that therefore minus 1 is less than x minus 1 which is less than 1. That's how you translate this. And if you add 1 to each of the sections you end up with 0 is less than x and it's less than 2. Okay. Beautiful. We're just trying to find an actual value of x so we can plug the x in here. So Based on this, x is greater than 0, but x is less than 2. You have to pick one of these numbers. How do you decide which number to pick to go represent x? Well, just know this. Whenever you're saying that something is less than another, let's, let's use a good example. Let's say your income, income, come on, spell correctly, is less than your bills. But I don't know that. You're the one making the claim. If I want to really, if I want to show that, or I want to know that this is really less than this, what I do is I give you more money. If I give you more money, and that money you now have still cannot pay your bills, then it means what you said originally was true. I can't take money away from you. So I have to make the left-hand side bigger to prove that it is still less than the right-hand side. 
So anytime you come to this inequality, always pick the bigger value, always pick the bigger value so that instead of plugging in zero here, you're plugging in two. Make sense? So we're plugging in two, we're gonna go here because if you plug in zero, this is gonna make this zero, just minus one, which is not what we want, okay? What you want is a bigger number. If you plug in two, it's gonna give you a bigger number. It's gonna be two times three, which is six, right? Two times three is six minus one, five. Okay, so you're gonna end up with a five being represented here, and that's what we're gonna do. So, remember, the, the purpose of this is to restrict the other one, okay? So this is gonna be two squared plus two, which is six minus one, that's five times five is less than epsilon. So you have absolute value of x minus one is less than epsilon over five. That is the claim that I am gonna make. Could you have picked a number that is smaller than one? Yes. The reason we choose one is because it's easy to deal with. You don't wanna deal with one over seven or one over 345. You don't wanna do fractions because once you go below one, and it's still a positive number, it's a fraction, and it doesn't make your work clean or easy. So that's why we stick with one. Okay, let's get rid of this and finish this proof, because we're done. As soon as you get to this situation, you look at this line, say, oh, I can assume that this is my delta. So you can say, I choose, I choose delta equals epsilon over five. And once you've made your choice, you're done. Because some proofs, actually, if this was advanced calculus, once you're able to find, in fact, once you get to this point, you can divide both of them by x squared plus x minus one. And you're done. Let's get rid of this. So now that you have your delta, what you wanna do is check that this delta equals epsilon over five works. And it's very easy also. Remember we started with an inequality the next time, you don't wanna start with an inequality. You just wanna start with the function you were given. Here, you wanna start with this, okay? We don't know that it's less than epsilon because now, we now have a delta. We wanna show that it's less than epsilon. What we did before was we, we claimed that it's less than epsilon and that we can find a delta. Now we've found a delta because we have chosen this to be our delta. Let's go use it and see whether what we have on the left will be less than epsilon. And it's just a repeat, it's a trick. Watch this. So you're gonna say that the absolute value of the original, you have this x cubed. I'm gonna skip many steps because I don't wanna do all of these, okay? Um, of x cubed minus two x minus negative one, it's gonna become x minus one, the factored form, x squared plus x minus one. Okay, and this is the same thing as the absolute value of x minus one multiplied by, when we restricted this, we said it was absolute value of five, rather. Okay, the restricted value. And what did we say x minus one was? x minus one was less than delta, and we said that delta is epsilon over five. If this is less than delta, then you can just say this is less than delta. That's what you do. But what is delta? Delta is epsilon over five. So, and this is equal to epsilon over five times five. Well, the absolute value of five is five, and what is that? that is equal to epsilon. And that's how you do your proof. Done. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.